car is always dangerous. And winter is coming. I'm getting lost in the details of nothing. Remember the first time you saw Star Wars? We were still living at your mom's house. As Dwight gets his nitrous oxide business going, he tracks down the assassin who tried to kill him and forms a crew from unlikely candidates. This is Season 1, Episode 4 of Tulsa King, Visitation Place, and you are channel surfing with the bargain bin. Description from IMDb, we will not be holding back on spoilers. I am Sandro, and I am joined, as always, by my podcast partner in crime, Ben, and our neighbor downstairs, Mark. So, what did we think? It's, it's, it's an interesting one. Uh, I'm kind of torn. I like that we're getting into some actual deep plot points now. Uh, but I, I'm missing the lightheartedness that we had from the uh, the previous three episodes. What do you guys think? Welcome, neighbors. I, just, I wanted to say that for the last couple episodes because I thought that was a cool intro. So okay. um, <laughs> how you guys doing? <laughs> um, I, I think I called this. I said, I think he seems like a nice guy, but he turns. And it was like a palpable shift in this even right at the beginning, even like with some stranger, he didn't know that was a female, the way he treated her on, the, on his exit in the beginning. He's definitely getting much more aggressive is Dwight. I still think that the, to, to say he turned, you'd have to define his previous personality. Cause th- this is a man who went to jail for murder. It's not to say that he didn't have some of this inside of him, it was just a matter of when is he ready to reveal it. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that was a point we said in the beginning, right? Like, he seems like this jovial, really charming guy. I'm like, that's not what he's going to be. Yeah. You know? So, I, I don't know. I'd say that him turning would almost be as if he was to say, turn his back on the people that are loyal to him. And no matter how violent or... Um, relentless he gets from a business standpoint if he's still taking care of his people i don't know if i would call that turning i think mark meant that he's showing his true colors yeah like a shift like the 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 mood shifted from his jovial self to a yeah it's it's he's no longer testing the waters yeah i I think we'll see the jovial side again situation dictating i think this was just a more serious episode that I know we talked about it last week and possibly even the week before that we're going to see, you know, some form of a crew forming. And this definitely cemented that a lot more because we even saw some of the guys that we thought could join in theory, like Badface, all coming together. And that uh, this episode really, really paved the way for cementing that crew. Yes. Yeah, it, it feels an episode late for me. Because in most TV seasons, the third episode of the first season is the one that starts bringing the full story together. But I find in this first scene of episode four, where Dwight confronts Manny in his own home, where everything starts kind of coming to light. Like how Dwight was set up, how Manny knew, how Pete put uh, a hit on him. Um, and then there's the, the confusion of the mix up. They each think they're out to get each other. Um, but then, yeah, like, like you're saying, Sandro, about him building a crew. Now Manny works for Dwight, but this is the first time I truly feel that, that Dwight is acting like the muscle, like he used to before it was verbal intimidation and this is i'm going i'm going to beat you up i'm going to mess up your life you you messed up mine here's your comeuppance unless you do what i say well eventually he has to or he's just going to be all talk yes but that 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 comes up in the episode for him it's he even says it's all about talk in in different words i mean with the whole reference of uh the art of war. Um, oh, they like, really drove home that this was going to be a non-violent uh, exactly. situation and they were going to use their brains. Or a Machiavellian strategic 
like cerebral kind of victory, right? Yeah, and then it comes to a, a beatdown with baseball bats. <laughs> I was expecting Ron Burgundy to show <laughs> up and you know <laughs> someone to show up with a trident. So going back to just the crew forming, because obviously the confrontation with the baseball bats is you know the, the peak of the episode. Yes. But I do like how when you look at the crew that is forming, many of them are coming from very different places. Yes. Right? Like Tyson wants to find himself, as we've talked about. Manny is clearly strong-armed into this situation because what else is he going to do in this pace? He's, he's indebted to him, so to speak. Almost similarly, in reluctance, but for different motivations because it's a business thing. You have Bodhi just not wanting to be involved. <laughs> uh, he took a nice little swing there, though, didn't he? He took a little yeah. cut there at the end. He was turning. He was turning. I, that's he what started. I'm saying. He's, he flipped, right? Like, they, like, he took a cut at the end there. He was starting to enjoy it. Um, and, but then, of course, the bartender who was not involved in the confrontation is also, like, continuing to seem to me like he's going to somehow be a bit more of an equal to Dwight uh, than a lackey. So yeah. there's a very interesting dynamic with this crew that are, hey, you can say, okay, Dwight is using them, but there's different motivations to why they are working for Dwight. And they each have one and it is for him other than Manny. <laughs> they actually choose it kind of right like i know Bodhi kind of got snarled but Bodhi didn't really push back either right like Bodhi's like okay whatever i think manny's just gonna be uh strong armed into it initially and oh we yeah we see obviously see that at the end that it feels like manny might willingly kind of resubmit himself to that lifestyle yeah, I can't wait till we talk about that later too. Uh, what do you what do you think about this too? Uh, because it's nine episodes, right? Not eight. Could it be that they that they maybe delay that uh, congealing of the crew that you would have in the third episode to the fourth? I mean, is that maybe a strategic writers thing because they had an extra episode? It could be. It could it could very well be. Because I thought the third episode was really good. I thought it was really yeah. full of. I mean, we talked about how much a action and and all the greatness that it had in it. Um, you're you're right. I, I think I think that's probably what they're doing. I said maybe, but I no, I think you are correct. Um, it's just interesting that between episode one and four, the tone of the show has changed greatly. Episode one and two was all us full of laughs and giggles, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's getting pretty serious. Um, Sandra, you're talking about uh, the crew forming. I love mm -hmm. that that bad face is in town. I love that we get Mark involved eventually. Um, I find it interesting that it's bad face and not... Uh, uh, what's his name? Walter uh, Cowan. I feel like... Callan Waltrip is going to become an adversary. And I think Badface will defect and stay with Dwight. Um, but th this is something I, I find very interesting because it feels like we are getting that crew that you were talking about. But we're also getting on the sidelines these adversaries forming, these groups of enemies. Because now we finally have the bikers that were hinted at before. Um, we've got whatever's going on at this ranch, which I, I'm very curious to see. And I think the third group will be these drug dealers, the owners of the, the weed farm where they're sourcing all of their weed. Um, and it feels like it's going to be an uphill battle without them directly stating it. And I, I'm pretty excited for that. I don't know if that's just me looking too deep into things. Did you guys feel that at all? I don't think so. I think that no. the uh, actual drug farm is not going to be as major of a factor. I th still think Stacy and her crew are potentially going to be the third wheel in this. Okay. Just be or or maybe even the ranch, um, because we saw Manny tried to steal the horse yeah. to pay back Dwight, and it could be that you know we we did speculate there could be some 
shady dealings going on there too, although that could be just pure speculation, but no. I I just feel like it's not going to be th- the drug farmers. I think they're just going to essentially stick to farming drugs. <laughs> well, and and that's that's possible, but with bad face he is the standout character, so bring him in, do whatever you can to separate him from the farm so he can just stay in Tulsa with Dwight and crew. But, yeah, with the, the ranch, there's no way they're bringing in Dana Delaney and not having her play a major role in the show. So I think that's going to be an issue going down the road. What I was going to say was, uh, I because they said that their source of weed got destroyed in the they didn't they hint at that with the bikers i feel like it'll play some role but just compound it on top of the nitrogen gas fiasco right or mm-hmm. the nitrous oxide so like i just feel like it's just a compounded escalation of the same war of the same problem well, i could be wrong but i think that the bikers drug source was a separate one from what dwight uses right that's my point though is my point is they got shut down so now they're going to look for a source so they're going to go to this farm, right? To the one that Dwight's using now. Yeah. And couple that with the conflict over the nitrous tanks. Now right. we have even further grounds for these two factions to be at ends. Right. So I feel like it's just one of those things where they're just throwing escalations to the upcoming war. eventual. I, war. Nev- I never looked at this episode as a buildup episode, but you've both convinced me that that's exactly what this is. Like, now we watched three episodes of character development. Now let's start developing the story. And honestly, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited to see what episode five has to say. Because we're, we're almost done. <laughs> I can't believe it. Because you know that there's going to be retribution. The biker gang is not just going to take a beating and then say, all right, well, they, they bested us. Let's move on. So this is just going to lead to escalations and obviously those escalations are going to play into everything we've saw we've seen in this episode such as mark for example oh he is so good there's one part that really confused me and you guys can probably wisen me up on it and maybe it's something simple that i just missed but why did he join so easily he's been so adamantly against everything that tyson's been doing and Obviously, they showed a lot more of that today with, you know, the the conflict at the dinner table and even beyond that when they were arguing and Tyson kind of just tried to, I don't know, throw money at his problem. And his dad just like he wants nothing to do with it. He reinforces that Tyson knows right from wrong, but then he grabs a baseball bat. I think. Sorry, go ahead. No. That's fine. I was just going to elaborate on the same thing. I'm open to to reasoning now. I think he just loves his son so much. Like he loves Tyson so much that he wants to see exactly what's going on and he knows that his son got roughed up. And if his son's new boss, if Dwight is going to seek revenge for that, he wants to be a part of it, but he's also doing it to try and understand what his son has gotten himself into. So in a way, he's trying to show his son that he'll do anything for him because he's not doing it for the money. He just exactly wants to show Tyson that, hey, no matter how much you screw up or what situation you get yourself into, I will still always be here for you as your father, even if it's doing something I don't want to do. He has been incredibly supportive. I think it was beyond that in this one instance. It's kind of like he went to Papa Bear mode. Yeah. And that's entirely possible. He saw his kid injured and just flipped it. He, initially, he just had a confrontation with, uh, with, with his son. But when he realized that they were going to solve the problem, he's like, oh, I'm in now. Because, like, you know, and he was my friend. He just said it. And then he off, Dwight offered him money at the end. Walked away again, right? But I did have a thought of this. If he does get a little deeper, what if he runs, maybe launders the money for the crew, like through his personal business? Doesn't he have like a plumbing or some kind of? What he's like a yeah collar worker, right? Like I, a, a pre- I don't know if it's going to be like a future uh, development. I think it might be a past reflection, and that Mark himself has a shady past. 
Ah, that's good too. Good point. And that's why he keeps warning Tyson about like keeping on the right side of the road and staying clean. Right. He already knows it. He knows it well. Yeah. Because he he swung that bat like a champ. Like he knew what he was doing. (laughs) Oh no, he was just a baseball player. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't want you to end up in the majors like I did. (laughs) (laughs) But no, Mark is a very interesting character. Um, it, it's 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 pretty awesome that Tyson and Mark, in my opinion, are the two most interesting characters of this show. They're secondary characters and they're father and son. I, I'm very much focused on this family dynamic. I want to see what these two do going forward. Their chemistry was quite good in this episode. Yeah. Yeah, you can feel the friction, right? That father and mm-hmm. son love yet. You know, that push-pull, constant push-pull there. But my question is, what are your thoughts about Tyson's kind of – I did not like his personality in this one. Like, he almost got a little big for his bridge. They're just a little bit too quickly cocky. Yeah, and I didn't like – it didn't sit well with him. It sits better when he's smarmy. I don't know. I I agree. I'm glad you brought that up. I have a note about that here. And, yeah, he did seem a little bit different than what we're used to seeing from him. Did you catch that, Sandro? I just think this is a further evaluation of him diving headfirst into this lifestyle that he's still not 100% clear on what it is, but just mm-hmm. feels like it's something that he wants. Like, that, you know, we said it before that uh, his eagerness will be his downfall. And it feels yeah. like he's going into a lot of this kind of blind, right? Because he just doesn't know he's not seeing the gravity of the situation and the consequences that can come with this. Okay. With what we've seen so far, do, do we think any of these characters aren't making it out of this season? I don't even want to speculate on that. I don't know. I'm curious. I, I, I don't want to say who I'll make a bold one, but I think Tyson's going to be in the hospital. Okay. And I think that only because they've been pre like he chose to stay. He was given the out. There's they've got to call back to that with the father being involved. And it. I feel like it's just the way to go. We're going to lose two people. That's my prediction. Two. Do you have predictions on whom by any chance? No, no. But they need to draw massive amounts of dramatic weight in a very short amount of time. Is Taylor Sheridan known for doing that in that way with the Yellowstone and the other ones? And mm, not necessarily killing off, but gravely injuring people. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking Tyson was going to be in the coma the second he chose to stay. Like that just popped in my head right off the bat. Like that he's in, it's going to get hurt in one episode of Yellowstone. A hit's put out on the entire family. <laughs> <laughs> And it's incredibly violent. And Breaking Bad like, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, sidestep. What is up with Stacy and this random guy? I'm done. I No, I, I really <laughs> like it. I really like this. Because it's keeping her relevant. Um, but not in a way that's relevant to the story. She's present, I should say. So I'm assuming this guy has some important role that has not yet been revealed. I still have no idea what they're doing with this character. I thought that the worst version of Stacy was going to be this puppy dog eyes versions that can't seem to get enough of Dwight, but randomly doing another guy from the bar, Stacy's not any better. And it serves even less of a purpose for this episode see i knew i knew you would dislike it i assumed mark would i i kind of dug it because right now she's the most realistic person in this show she's humanly flawed in a lot of ways exactly i mean it's it she is really human and maybe that's what it is that she's like that but it's not that i think i just don't understand how why she's that important in any way or needs to be I don't know yeah. if that's a necessary part of any of it, to be honest. That's a very good point, and I'm I'm very interested in that. I'm I'm curious. So the writing is successful there for me, but obviously not for you two. So I, I'm I'm 
I don't know if we're going to see Stacy for much longer in the show because while the co- like the uh, the government agency she works for is important, she doesn't really seem to play an important role here. What if the guy that she slept with is the assassin that Chicky sent that Dwight thought Manny was, and he yeah. knew there was some level of connection between her and Dwight, yeah, and he's using her to get closer to Dwight. It has to be something like that. It has to. Could it be that it's the guy's either super important or completely not important only to show Stacy that she's kind of moved on so they can put a pin in it till they bring her back. I would like that one more because in Sandro's idea, she's just being used She's she's just a, a character being used to make another person important. And I can see them doing that, but I don't like it. I like well, your idea, Mark, where it's more so kind of benching her for a bit. Well, like keeping an eye on her, but her well, not being a she's major She's moved player. on kind of, right? Not not moved on, moved on, but definitely not calling Dwight or at his place the yeah, next Because they, right? they wrote her into a corner, something fierce. Yeah. And we all didn't like that. We really, that was palpable to us, right? Yeah. They just need to do something with her. I don't care which direction they go. Just pick one. And yeah, the funny thing agreed. is she's actually very good. Her dialogue is phenomenal. So use the, use the banter, right? She, she has mm-hmm. that, that skill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they, they must be building something. I, I firmly believe they're doing something that we just don't understand yet because the creators of the show are too smart to do this to this character. Um, I want to ask you both, uh, what do you think about the boys getting fucked up and robbed at the fair? (laughs) So uh, very predictable. I don't know if I said it on the last episode or just when we were chatting, I think that the people that were running the tanks are not going to be happy having competition. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there was some, speculation that it was the guys at the party so maybe they weren't confrontational and i said well maybe it's the people behind them well it turns out that yes that is the biker gang so no they don't like people moving in on their turf what i don't understand is how the guys there didn't see that coming the second night (laughs) yeah like they essentially told the the two guys on the first night like get out of here you know you don't You don't own the parking lot. But when they saw like a much bigger group of guys wearing biker jackets coming at them, something should have tipped them off. Yeah. I don't think that Bodie's mouth works with that industry. That's an interesting way of putting it. Uh, Like, because the dude can't back any of his stuff up. He just maybe, maybe this thing switched, right? Because he'd started taking a couple swings, right? But like that first thing, did he seem like the kind of guy who would have been like, haha, you don't own the place? Like he would have pushed back that much. I, even no. with his buddy, I didn't feel like, I felt like he would have stepped back. I felt like it would have gone the other way. But yeah. See, you say, haha, you don't own the place, but that's not the attitude I saw from him because the guy said, who said you could set up here? And he almost said, like, kind of quizzically, the parking lot? Like, I don't think he was trying to. Well, because at the end, he was like, bye bye. Remember, he was like, bye bye. He was like fling, flinging the balloon around a little bit. I don't know. I felt like a little taunty. And it just Bodie doesn't seem like a guy who can afford that. I think Bodie's the only character in this show that doesn't need to evolve. True. He he can stay himself the entire time and it will be fine. Well, he is he is great the way he is. Well, just Mar- Martin Starr knows what he's doing with the character. Right. For sure. Um I just didn't we, think Bodie was would be would have that much strong of a back at that confrontation. He, I I think it's hard for us to ignore the fact that he is getting more confident with the more he interacts with Dwight. Good point. The, there is no way he wouldn't be. Um, is it muted? Yes. Uh, is he Tyson level? No, definitely not. <laughs> um, do you guys think that Bodhi's going to become more of a 
not outlandish, but more outspoken character. Is he gonna is he gonna stay the subdued stoner? I think he's gonna stay. Yeah, me I, too. I think we'll see him break out of his shell a little bit more here and there. Yeah. But I don't think that his base uh personality is really gonna change from what they've set up in the show because it works. Yeah. I hope I hope that's the case. I agree. I think the only thing if he graduates to anything would be like carrying a personal firearm. Yeah. <laughs> that not not use it and not like wield it like crazy, like just be him, but just have that. Yeah, in, just like, the the, the, the reference or acknowledgement that he's doing that would be enough for the show. Exactly, it doesn't need to be like it doesn't need to be used in any kind of way other than just that he like stepped it up, right? Um, I have another question for you too. Sure. Um, at the end of the episode, after the uh, the boys attack the bikers, beat them down with the baseball bats, we get the final bar scene. And this, for some reason to me, feels like home turf now. Like, it's their clubhouse. Yeah. Um, we're not told that specifically, but I found that idea very comforting. Um, I got would- that feeling earlier in the episode when they were still doing an, a discussion on just going to the fairgrounds. Yeah. And Dwight was just, just walked behind the bar and poured himself a drink and asked the guys if they wanted you know, a drink yeah. that he was just kind of like getting more comfortable with it and yeah. kind of making it his own space. And classic Bodhi saying like, no, n- no drinks were working. Like it, everyone feels very comfortable there. And I don't feel like Bodhi has Bodhi even been there before. I, I, don't, I don't remember him there. I don't remember him being there, but yeah, it, I'm it sure he feels knows like the bar uh, though, right? Like it's yeah. Tulsa. It just feels like a rallying point for them. And I really hope this becomes like, instead of Dwight going to the uh, dispensary and them talking there, I hope that the bar takes over for that. So everybody involved in the crew now can just meet up there because the bar, the way they filmed it, the way the set is done, it's very warm and welcoming. And that's what this crew is to me. Like these are our heroes. They're well, not all good guys. (laughs) But, the, well, but like the anti-hero too. I mean, that's exactly. such a huge thing. Um, I think that the first shot we get in that bar scene that you're referring to after where it's the backs of all of them lined sitting up in, in a row. I loved it. Was just a very visually stabilizing image um, mm-hmm. that, yeah, this is now not just our home turf, but this is our crew. It's almost like, oh, we're kind of even kind of slowly building, uh, like this is where I sit. This is where you sit. You know, everyone's like, like huddled up, right? Yeah, everyone's got their spot. And but you guys called that from the second that the uh, bar, you know, the bar owner was uh, introduced in in the first episode. You guys, you guys said that was going to happen, and it did. Yeah. So kudos. What, what I like about it is that when you're you and your crew are sitting at a bar, there is no head of the table. You're in a line. Yeah. Obviously, Dwight is the guy, but everybody else, even Keel. And I think that might be shaken up later on as we go. But I, I, I like it that has solidarity. To, right. So it has to, the crew has to grow, has to beat their first conflict, and then internal mm-hmm. conflict has to break it up exactly. or create. I mean, it's, you know, the classic. Not classic, but. No, a I think you're right story. in calling it classic. I'm trying not um, to because it, it is – It's. Di- I will say for all the shows I've watched, this is has more of an original flair. Now, I haven't watched, like I said, the Yellowstones or the 1883s because of the content, but mm-hmm. it's – the writing here is different. It feels – it was a it was a great episode again. I mean, yes, we had three, it was. We were three out of four at least in really good episode. So I think there's one thing we didn't really touch on at all. And that's what I was about to bring up. <laughs> I think it's going to be Ben's least favorite part. Uh, yeah. It's the storyline with Dwight's brother, Joe. Yeah. And I feel like Ben's going to dislike it because it kind of runs in regards to necessity parallel with the storyline with Dwight's daughter. Yes. And and you are 100% correct. That is the last note I have here. And that is brother Joe's death. Um, 
I already repressed that. What are we doing? What are, what are we doing with this familial connection? I uh, feel like him- the sis- is it the sister that, yeah. that was also there? I feel like she's going to mooch off him or something. That's what it feels like. I think she's a throwaway character. Okay. That's the only um, thing I could think of for him, for that connection, other than to make it more like he still can have compassion. I don't know. I don't. Uh, the only way I can see it, and it might bother Ben even more, is that now that they lose their brother, she starts to kind of value family even further, and realizing that Dwight is kind of it will end up helping Dwight with his daughter. Because the f- first thing we get when they kind of converse is that. She says, like, I'm not getting involved in that, referring to the daughter. But now she might because. Good point. I but, don't want that. I don't want that story. I, I don't line. like this whole, once again, like there are, it's so well done and so deep with the group and the conflict. Why, why do you need the love interest? Why do you need the family interest? It's, it really works. Well, I said it was going to be something Ben was going to hate. <laughs> and you're right. I do. Because he, you go to the extent of writing in all these interesting characters and building up this crew, which is quickly becoming a family. I don't care about the family that's already established that have fallen apart because they're uninteresting. Could that be the yeah. meta part of it, though? What, could that be what the an- analogy is, is that his real family died and now his his chosen family is his only one but you don't need to put him in the episode for that he was in no no i know that but i'm saying years. for yes for us you know what i mean for us to see it like so we can make that connection i don't think it's necessary i think um sandra was cut off but i think i i agree with what he was saying sandra what what was the rest of your point there well he's been in prison for 25 years if we go into it you could have it as simple as him trying to reach out and hearing that his family is gone. And that's enough to make this new crew, his surrogate family, because we can anticipate with the 25 years in prison that he's already kind of lost his family. Yes. Right. But to yes. your point about the the conversation where the foreshadowing about this, the daughter not getting involved. So once again, maybe that is that ultimate point of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not like, saying I want it to happen. I'm just saying that that's no, I don't the think thing any that of would make did, the most sense to me. Do any of us want this storyline or plot twist or storyline to happen? Really? No. No, no God, exactly. no. Exactly. So I, like, I was upset with the daughter, the daughter <laughs> storyline. I, I don't I like the it. Daughter, I haven't even met her yet. And then you bring in the sister, and then you bring in the dying brother. Right. Who has right. zero impact other than so, he's gone. Uh, don't just don't we don't need that those are the parts of every episode that they're in that i like the least i'm just like all right let's get back to the actual main plot i don't care this is a story of a man whose surrogate family turned their backs on and now he's trying to rebuild with new people we don't need the family that he also turned his back on like we we don't need that. It's yes, it is a real part of life. I get it, but this is a television show. So let's just leave the like legitimate family out of it, and let's pretend that Dwight is on his own and he's trying to make his way now. I like that a lot more. How much more depth of character can you get with an extra what four minutes? Yes, of time? exactly. Ten ten percent of the show extra into character development yeah think about that it's not much time maybe but it is a portion four to five minutes would you say Mm -hmm. so i mean that's eight that's one eighth or one tenth of the total amount yeah it's i would just i i wish there was more story less family here because they seem to be building towards something but we don't know what it is, and they're they're wasting our time by introducing these characters with these story elements that seem to go nowhere. So unless it's building to some big reveal, it, it, don't. Sandra, what's your take? Well, I think I've already said my piece. I don't need or want these storylines in there, and unless they show me some fantastically legitimate reason that I'm not expecting to give them a purpose... 
then yeah. they just feel like padding to the episodes. Like, get yep. me. Stacy is already enough of a storyline that's going nowhere for me to mm-hmm. to already kind of drag on the episodes for me. I don't need additional people for that. Yeah, cut that four minutes. Give it to Stacy. Give her something, please. Do you think it's her audience for? just getting a bigger group of audience because it has more emotion por- portion of it. Cause it seems like the Probably. three of us are very satisfied with the banter and that, cause we understand how the ribbing is actually the love and the affection that you're building and all that stuff. And, and, and that other stuff, more the emotional side that we just don't generally resonate yeah. with. Yep. Yeah. I, I think you nailed it right there. All right, so why don't we get to our highlights of the episode since we've kind of hit on all of the major plot points minus Manny's wife, uh, which who I thought was going to leave when he came home instead of him beating up the old man with the the, (laughs) the dog paper. Yeah, Um, so what was everybody's highlight of this episode? Mark, do you want to go first? I'm happy to go first. You just... You just mentioned it. So a little bit earlier in the episode, spoiler alert, somebody hits Dwight in the in the initial battle. Manny comes in and kind of saves him, right? So in the bar, Manny uh, Manny gets a couple bucks extra for helping him out, right? Mm-hmm. Which seems I pointless because like, he's owing him money. <laughs> right. I know. It's just crazy, right? 300 a week, is it? Or is it a, mu- is it a week? It's 300, um, a, week, 300 right? a week. 300 yeah, a week. Yeah, okay. So, and yeah, I don't know how much are apples, these are oranges. And he goes, yeah, and he goes, and we're still, we're still on for that, right? Like he didn't, he didn't let him out of it, but there's something in Manny that flipped. And when he stepped in that dog shit, he went, the old me's back that, that swing of that bat, he goes back over and he just starts putting a whooping on that old man. And it's not just that he went back to it. Like he has like a smile on his face, like right. he's satisfied that he's rejuvenated back yeah, in his own skin. He's like, this is what I've been itching. I've been dying here. And then he comes back and she's talking about moving and goes, we already have a home. Yeah. And that's a cool thing too, because with Manny, all we know up until this point is that he's a rat. He seemed like a Weasley rat, but he never was actually. Right. It turns out in this whole time, he never actually did do anything. But like we, we, we believe him to be a rat, but who was he before that? Apparently a badass. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and him being part of the crew is uh, I'm looking forward to that. Well, he he worked for Dwight, Dwight said, and he wanted to get a hold of Dwight and essentially tell him that Dwight was the one that was backstabbed. Yeah. So their their history is a lot deeper than I had anticipated. Same. It's it's good writing. Uh what about you, Ben? Um for me, uh you you'll you'll both disagree with me, but my uh my is it what I want to say? No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Screw you, Joe. I really wish Joe was played by Frank Stallone. Um, no, I want to say it's uh, the beatdown uh, with the uh, the crew and the baseball bats. But what scene. really caught me off guard was uh, Stacy and that random guy going back to her place and fucking. Um. It came out of nowhere, and I'm like, this is done for a reason. Who is this person, and what is their inclusion going to be going down the road? Because before, like, other than that, everything in this episode, for the most part, makes sense. And we know what's happening. We know where it's going. It might diverge in an episode or two after this. But this was a mystery for me. And I'm so curious to know what's going on here. Uh, Is it a good scene? Debatable. Is it an interesting story point? I think so. I didn't like how they um, intertwined it with scenes of the fight. I agree with that. Yeah, that, that was a poor choice. I have a question about that, if I may, before Sandro, before you have your point, Sandro, before you have your favorite scene Um, on that, you guys know the song that was being played was Edwin Starr's War, right? Yes. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, people go meta with this stuff, right? They always put an analogy or some connection. Is it maybe her war against Dwight by hooking up with another dude? I mean, it just happens to be the song. 
it's like it's a fight, right? It's like her, that's her fight against him by being intimate with someone else. I don't just think so. That. Okay. I think I just don't I know think, what this dude is either. I to your point, I'm just trying to figure it out now, you know. I think unfortunately she's being used. This this guy who we don't know I think he's going to be a major player. The part that really tipped me off or at least caused me to speculate that he is somehow involved in like being the assassin that Chicky sent is when they meet in the bar and she asks him, you know, what do you have to offer? Oh, a nice time with a nice guy. And she says, are you a nice guy? He's like, well, I like to think so. And that just kind of always yeah. harkens to yeah. perception of right and wrong where a lot of people that do wrong often think they're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. And it just really had me raise an eyebrow on this guy. Yeah, you're probably right. So. Yeah. What was yours? What was yours, Sandro? I'm going to make this really simple. I don't have a lot of friends, so it means a lot to me that you're including me in this beatdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad face. Oh, oh, bad he's man. so good. He was so good the first time I saw him, and even though he gets minimal screen time beyond, you know, beating the shit out of people with a bat, you gave him essentially one line in this episode, and it was my favorite line. It was so good. Yeah, he's he's great. Because <laughs> it, it also eschews the perception of him, where asking him to join the beatdown is friendly to him <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind gesture so those were our highlights uh now we just have to rank the episode as a quick reminder how we had it before was um episode one then episode three and then episode two at the the very bottom um i think this one's at the bottom for me now really uh, and it's it's not because it's not good. It's just this is where we start to actually build the bigger story. So I want to see where it goes. It wasn't enjoyable as the the previous three episodes. Um, like we we laughed a lot for the others. Um, yes, I had problems with the whole like Dwight's daughter storyline, but we had like, brother Joe's death in this one. Uh, I am very curious to see where it goes from here. And I think it's probably just going to go up and up and up. I think the the season will end on the highest note. Um, Mark, what do you think? I'm going to say that it, I'm going to go one, three, four, two, but hmm. it's closer to three. I mean, it's, it's, it's not as close to three as three is to one, but I thought it was good, even though it had a palpable, like I said, a palpable shift. You could taste the change in mood and attitude, but yep. I still felt the second episode just was had some kind of bottoming out effect that had I that they recaptured in the third one. Okay, I'm a hundred percent with Mark. I would I would put this one just above episode two. Episode two had some good funny bits it was our introduction to bad face and the camaraderie on the trip to the distiller distillery a dispensary but i think that ultimately scenes like the fight in this and the further coming together of the crew definitely puts it above that one and then of course you can't deny the further dynamic with tyson and his father in this one which i thought was also um just adding you know a lot more to it. You know what? You you both convinced me. You're right. I'll I'll agree with that. That was a good point. But I will give you negative points for the weird staciness thing until unless it has a real point, which I hope it does. If you're going to do it, please have a point. Well, that and was the other, that was that was one of my favorite parts. Right, but I'm saying like if it means something, it's great. But if it doesn't, yes. is it really going to be one of your favorite parts? It's going to be a throwaway, right? If it, it if it be. really is just a distraction, I don't. I just like I said, we don't know what it is. But to for, Sandra's for point, now, I will agree with both of you. Yeah, but then we also lose points for Joe dying. You know, for bringing in the family too. It's like the there were a lot of points taken off for some stuff in this one, uh, the yeah. like deductions. You know, like in gymnastics. So we're what one three four two then? Correct. Okay. I'm that way. I'm ha I'm happy with that. I'll, Does anybody have any 
thoughts on any differences, we're pretty much aligned with all that, right? There hasn't been like a crazy thing. It's one's been fighting for one of the episodes yet, right? No. no, there's been a little bit of debating where, like we said, it could kind of constitute like a 1A, 1B situation where they're very close. But yeah. for the most part, we've agreed. So now it's just a matter of waiting and finding out where episode five is going to fall. From everyone here at Channel Surfing, remember, here we are bloody but not beaten. Down but not out. From this point on, this city... And everything in it belongs to us. Until next time.